All right, welcome back. We're here with David Limbaugh. He's showing off both his book and his brand new iPhone. It's really cool. This is like an exclusive interview that no one else has. You will not see this, anywhere else. This so, is pretty amazing. It is. Which would you like to tell us about first, the book or the iPhone? How about the iPad? I have a mini iPad here. Rush did give me this, if you wanted to talk about Rush. That's the extent oh. I'll talk about. And, and he Rush gave me this iPad. iPhone 6. He's always on the top of the uh, cutting edge of technology. He hasn't given me either yet. I think they're in the mail. Okay. Yes. The email. <laughs> anyway. Okay, ask me some substantive questions. Some substantive questions? I okay. I the, the book, Jesus on Trial. My ghostwriter has briefed me. All right, fantastic. Jesus on Trial. So is this about Jesus' life, Jesus' death, or the actual Neither. hours of the trial? Neither. 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 Okay. It is a, a book on Christian apologetics, fantastic. Uh, examining the evidence for Christianity's truth claims and affirming that they are true, in fact, and in history. And uh, it's also a discussion of some of uh, theology and paradoxical Christian uh, teachings of Christianity, different things that I think will appeal to a skeptic. I wrote this book mostly for skeptics mm -hmm. to introduce them to the gospel and to the Bible and its authenticity. I used to be a skeptic, yeah. and I am saying, you guys ought to take a second look or a first look. Don't believe what other people say about the Bible. Uh, if that's what you're doing, take a look yourself at the evidence. So is this written mostly from biblical references or are you using historical documents? What are we basing this on? Uh, both. I mean, I, I obviously a major part of the book is from the Bible because that's where we get most of the history. But it's corroborated, a lot of the Bible is corroborated by archaeological discoveries. Uh, and also the Bible itself is validated, the historicity of it, the accuracy of it, I mean, is validated by textual criticism. There are more copies of the Bible, extant copies of the Bible, than any other ancient manuscript. And so there are 25,000 copies alone of the New Testament. You compare those to other ancient books, the only one that comes close, and it doesn't come close, is Homer's Iliad, 1,800 copies. We're talking about like 7% of the New Testament. And most Old Testament manuscripts, I mean most uh, old manuscripts, ancient manuscripts, we only have 10 to 20 copies. I mean, a fraction, one thousandth of how much, yet we, we routinely accept their accuracy. Now, I realize they're not claiming to be the, the Word of God and all that, so it's, it, the Bible does require greater scrutiny. But the, the reason that it's significant that we have so many more copies of the New Testament and the Old Testament, there's a lot of, of Old Testament copies too, is that textual critics, and I'm talking about secular guys usually, can examine these texts in relation to each other from different locations. We're talking 25,000, and they can determine what the original was pretty closely because when you have so much uh, commonality between the uh, different ones, they can determine what it is. And so they've largely determined that the, the New Testament and the Old Testament have come down to us as originally written. That's a big deal. And then you examine when they were written, and they were, and, and I go in this, into this in the book, they were written, the New Testament documents, mostly written between um, 20 and 40 years of Jesus' life. So we're talking about 50s A.D., 60s A.D., and the book of John, 90, and Revelation, he wrote 90 A.D. And, and, and then you look at the extant manuscripts and how old they are and how big of a gap there is between the time the books were written and uh, the oldest document. We have the, uh, John Ryland's fragment in the dated between 115 and 140 AD. The book of John was written in 90 AD. So that's within like 25 years to 50 years. That is amazing. Now it only has uh, five verses from chapter 18, but it still validates that this book was, and, and we have a, a full copy of the uh, New Testament about 250 years, 250 years after uh, the book was written. Most ancient books, the gap between the time they were written and the first, the oldest ex existent manuscript is, a thousand years. A thousand! The New Testament only 250. And then the Iliad's like 350, so it's still way out there. But so you look at that, and we, we pretty much have the book as it was originally written, all the books of the New Testament. Then you look at the reliability of the writers. And they, they were all eyewitnesses or close associates of the eyewitnesses, and they had an incentive. They ch their lives changed when they saw the resurrected Christ. So I go through systematically an analysis of the evidence and uh, determined that, and I, it's not my original determination, but I believe, based on the evidence, that the, uh, the Bible is the Word of God, and, and Jesus did come in the flesh. He became God incarnate, became human, 
died for our sins, et cetera, et cetera. So. I, I agree with you 100%. Thank you so much for writing the book. I appreciate it. Appreciate Hopefully it. many skeptics and people of faith will read it and understand, you know, that we aren't basing our faith on something that just happened in the last hundred oh, years. No, no. It's very substantial. And I think Christians can't really defend their faith. We don't understand this concept of that we have the historical documents. That, that's right, and it will stand up to scrutiny. That the, the, the people, the critics will say it's myth. No, they are perpetuating the myths. You look at, the, for example, the Da Vinci Code, they'll say there's 80 competing Christologies, uh, different stories that vied for prominence to make it in the New Testament. That's just absolutely not true. The, the, the New Testament writers always regarded Jesus as God. And, and so if you really look at the evidence, you will find that it is the critics who are making up stories, not the gospel writers. It's pretty exciting stuff. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Are you so, so motivated to get the book? Wait, wait, would you? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, yes. Would you tell him how much you're motivated to get this book? I am so motivated to get this book because he's going to sign it for me momentarily. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go buy it right now. All right. Well, what, I first I have to go back and get some money, but then I'm going to go buy it, I and then it he's going to sign it. I know you need the actual no, one. The publisher you, you said need it. unless I did this book for free, they weren't going to publish me this time. So I've done it for free, mainly philanthropically, and it's my mission. All right, well, everyone, go get the book. And, Jesus uh, on so trial. I'm a liar and a Christian. There that we go. Kind of fit well, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's book. Thank you. Who's I appreciate it.